guys it's modded warfare here welcome back to another apparition net studio video i know you're probably sick of these videos by now um i've uploaded way too many but uh i promise you guys i'll be this will be probably the last apparition net studio video i make until at least for a good few weeks maybe even a month or more um so anyway yeah so in this video i'm going to be going over some of the changes we made in the new update 1.2.8 there's specific things i wanted to cover here um, that are quite important, which is why I felt the need to make another one of these videos um, Because especially stuff like changing your hardware ID and plugins um, I need to kind of clear some stuff up with that. So first of all um, In a recent update we have switched over the plugins now the reason we've done this is that uh, We kind of we're kind of trying to address the two biggest issues people were having with the tool one of which was plugins where uh, a lot of people were having issues connecting the tool to their console because they kept getting confused between JRPC1 and JRPC2. A lot of people have JRPC2 and AppNet uses JRPC1 so you know people think that JRPC1 and JRPC2 are the same thing or that, that if they have JRPC2 it will work and it doesn't. They're separate plugins and that's that caused confusion uh, between quite a few people. And the fact we had to have two plugins was a bit irritating as well. Um, you needed XRPC and JRPC. So we've gone ahead and in not so long ago we, we switched it over to XDRPC. So Apparition Net Studio now just uses XDRPC. You don't need XRPC or JRPC, just XDRPC. And the reason is it's just one plugin. Um, technically, it injects JRPC1 itself, um, but you don't have to have JRPC1 as a separate plugin. You just need XDRPC. In fact, you don't even need to have XDRPC as a plugin, technically. You can just put it in the root of your hard drive, and as long as you have XBDM, it will automatically launch XDRPC. So you don't even have to have it as a plugin. It doesn't even take up a plugin slot. slot. However, if for whatever reason it's not working, then you probably should add it as a dash launch plugin, but technically it should work uh, just in the root of the hard drive. So um, yeah, that's one thing that should hopefully help clear up a lot of the plugin issues. The other thing we've done is we've made it easier to um, change hardware ID, and I'll probably go over that. Um, in fact, I'll just go over that now, actually. Let's go ahead and I'm just gonna change my hardware ID, and we'll go ahead and reopen the tool. So the biggest issue with hardware ID, obviously we have the tool locked. Um, you're, when you make your account, uh, that account gets locked to whatever computer you signed up on. So you can only use that account on that computer. Uh, so it's one computer per account, that's how it works. The reason we have to do this is that if we didn't have any kind of hardware uh, lock on the accounts whatsoever, then literally anyone could you know, make one account, post it on a forum, and then hundreds of people could use that one account without buying a license. So it's something that we have to do, regrettably. Um, and as you can see, a lot of, if you change your computer and try and sign in, then you will get a error message. And this error message basically says that, um, you know, you need to log into the computer you signed up on. If this is the computer you signed up on, then some hardware information has changed in your computer. So that can be, you know, if you swapped out the CPU or you swapped out your motherboard in your computer recently, then that's gonna obviously cause a hardware mismatch. Um, and obviously if you switch your computer completely, you, you know, maybe had a laptop, now you've moved to a desktop or you've moved to a completely different computer and you're trying to sign in, then it's not gonna let you um, access it. And before it was very awkward for us to try and fix this because we'd have to do a lot of stuff manually. We'd have to get um, people to contact us or make a support ticket um, for us to help uh, get this kind of issue resolved. But we've now got a system where you can actually do this yourself. You don't even have to contact support to change your hardware ID. So in order to change it, okay, so all you have to do is go ahead and you know install the program on the new computer that you want to use now. And you'll try and log in and you'll get this error message. And then all you have to do is basically, if you just say, um, if you just close the login box, it'll open the tool, but you won't have access to anything apart from the settings. If you go ahead and open up the settings and head to my license and then change password or computer, you can go ahead and click this 
and why on earth it's opening up an edge I do not know uh, but whatever so it will go ahead and open up the customer panel and you can just sign into your account on here so go ahead and sign into the customer panel and once you've signed in here you'll see that there's this option change computers when you change machines the software will lock to the next uh, on next login to whichever machine you log in on basically so all you have to do is click the button to change machine on next login and that'll activate and now that that's activated if I go ahead and sign in here my account will now be locked to this computer and there we go it signs me in I don't get the error anymore because the account is now locked to this computer rather than the computer it was locked to before. Now obviously we can't allow people to do this all the time because again you could share accounts with multiple people so um, in order to circumvent that you can only do this once every six months so uh, where are you edge okay so you can only do this once every six months as you can see um, I think it says here yeah this can only be done once every six months so you when you initially create your account and you sign up it will get locked to whatever computer you sign up on and then you get one free change after that at any point to switch to another computer after you've done that then you have to wait six months to do it again um, which I think is pretty fair so yeah that is basically how you do it you don't even have to contact support or anything like that to change your hardware ID you can now do it completely yourself through the customer panel um, so yeah that is basically the hardware ID in terms of other things we've done in this update uh, we've got of course the dash launch editor this was actually always available um, in the older versions but there's never been an option in here just to open it quickly so if you want to edit your dash launch settings your launch.ini your plugins your, launch, your button launches or any of that stuff you just click it and then you can you know enable and disable stuff you've got ping patch you know live block and all that kind of stuff is on here uh, your plugins list is right here so you can edit that um, as you can see in fact this is a great example I don't have XDRPC added as a plugin but it is running um, and then of course button launches as well you can edit that too in fact if I just go ahead and test that yeah, you can see XDRPC is running, so is JRPC, even though I don't have them added as a plugin because I just have XDRPC in the root of my hard drive. So yeah, that is basically that. You can access the Dash Launch Editor. Now you could access it before by going into the File Manager and then basically just double clicking on a launch.ini and saying yes to edit in the Dash Launch Editor and then it would open the Dash Launch Editor. Or of course you could say no and it will just open in Notepad. Um, but now at least there's a kind of quick access button on the, the uh, launcher that you can use to access it now. Another thing we've improved is the key vault checker. So you've now got this on the side here. So if I go ahead and open up a key vault. So I've got two key vaults here. If I just select them both and click open, it'll start checking both key vaults to see if they are banned or unbanned. And before, in order to get extra information, you used to have to double click, but now you can just single click and you'll get the information on the right here. So it'll tell you if it's banned or unbanned, gives you the serial number, console ID, the manufacture date, region, OSIG and DVD key. All of that information is there as you can see. You can just switch between the two. And of course I can double click. The double click still works to get this information as well. But uh, it's just handy that it's now on the right for you to access quicker. Uh, we've also done the same with the network sniffer as well. I'm not going to actually use this because I can't be bothered blurring out people's um, IPs and stuff. But basically, there's now an option to grab IP info. And when you get clients with this enabled, it will also do an IP lookup. So a who is lookup on the IP address of each person in the game. So it'll also display extra information like their city, region, country, zip and ISP. Um, it does take a bit longer, obviously, to grab clients when you have this enabled because it has to do a who is lookup on each client that it grabs. So it does take a little bit longer, which is why we've got an option now to disable it so that, um, you know, if you want to grab the clients quicker and you're not bothered about doing an IP lookup on them, then you then you can just, you know, keep that disabled and it will load the clients much faster. But if you want that extra information, you can, of course, check the box and grab clients. 
We already had the option again to just double click a user which would bring up this IP lookup info and you can still do that even when this is disabled. But again, it's just nice to have it there uh, so you can quickly get the information when you're clicking on all the different clients. So yeah, that's um, pretty much it. Actually, no, it's not. We've actually got two new mod tools added. So Doom 3 BF, uh, BFG edition. Yeah, um, that's right, BF3 uh, BF, Jesus, BFG edition. Um, so we've got no clip god mode, um, entity dragging, you've got no target, unlimited ammo, you can give weapons, and you can even do custom um, like DVARs and stuff as well. And of course the evil within is also pretty similar. So you've got no clip god mode, slow mo, infinite ammo, no target, and debug camera. Uh, we've even added a Call of Duty 2 tool in here because some people were requesting this. Um, so you've got no clip god mode, just some basic stuff. We'll probably add a lot more to this soon. Uh, but there's even a DVAR editor. So quite a lot of stuff has actually been added in this update. Um, also people were requesting that we added um, the Ghost's Camo into Black Ops 2. So that's now added in the more stats option uh, options. So you can just go ahead and click um, whichever class you want to add the ghost camel to and then just click the button to add the ghost camel and of course you can select all classes and that will apply it to every single class um, you need the rogue camel to make it stick though which I think is a DLC camel so you need to make sure you have uh, the DLC for it to stick otherwise you know it, you'll only apply when you actually first go into a game but when you back out it will reset so you need to make sure you have that camel otherwise it will not stick but yeah, that is basically all the changes that we have done to 1.2.8. Um, also, guys, just want to note that um, I have got I have started a an Apparition Net Studio YouTube channel, um, which is goes into detail on everything. So whereas this video was more of just a general overview, um, the actual Apparition Net YouTube channel has individual videos for each feature in the tool. So if you want to learn more, if there's any feature that you don't understand, like maybe you don't know what the module updater does, or maybe you don't know what the module debugger does and what this is used for, um, or anything really. If there's anything in the tool that you don't know what it does, or you'd like to learn more, or maybe you are unsure how to use a certain feature, then definitely head on to that channel, Apparition Net Studio. I'll have it linked in the description. It's a pretty small YouTube channel. It's just going to have videos, small videos on each feature on Apparition Net Studio. I think I've already uploaded about 12 videos to it. Um, so there's still a lot more to upload, of course, but I will be, you know, uploading uh, videos every few days to that channel. So definitely go ahead and check it out if you're, in if you're interested or if you have a copy of Apparition Net Studio and you want to learn more about certain features that's definitely the channel to go ahead and subscribe to. Also, um, of course, the link to purchase the tool is in the description and so is the uh, link to the website. Now, another thing I wanted to just go over, one final thing, won't take long, I promise. Um, the support ticket system has been down for the past day, two days possibly. So here's the, so all you have to do, if, you're, if you have a question or you're struggling with something, there's a problem, um, if you need help with the software and you need to directly contact somebody like me or the other main developer and you need help with something, go ahead and click on the support and help. And in here you can see you can create a ticket. So you just go ahead, give it a subject, um, category, you know, general issue or something, put in a message, ask, give us information about what the problem is and you'll get a reply one of us will reply to you as soon as possible and basically help you out with whatever issue you're having. So yeah, just wanted to kind of clarify that and uh, clear everything up. So that's all the changes that have been made to 1.2.8. Um, the other developer is currently going on holiday for three weeks. So you probably won't be seeing an update for Apparition Net Studio for a good few weeks, um, maybe a month uh, before we release another update. Um, but I mean there's plenty of, of stuff to keep people going so far uh, So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did go ahead and leave a like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already Comment if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next one